We had uh, 11 chickens and that chicken coop was getting too small for them. As far as it was summer, they could sleep outside some of them or inside one of those barrels that I put there. Several of these kind of barrels I put, four barrels. But because it's getting cold and it's near the winter, it's now, uh, yeah, we are past the mid autumn or near the middle of the autumn. And so, I brought the other chicken coop that we had in the old chicken coop. I brought it here, dismantled it, uh, cleaned it, then um, reassembled it inside the orchard. So the chickens can go live there. And one of the chickens, Sylvie, which uh, was grown up here actually as a chick from an egg we had it here. She immediately was coming here to take a look. And she was curious, I think she remembers. They say chicken memory, but chickens I think have good memory in that sense. So this is the way it looks now. And I hope that uh, chickens will be liking this. They can sleep here also. And um, because here it will be damp, I have to raise it a little bit so the wood will not rot. And um, later I will uh, paint this with a resistant uh, paint so it will not rot the wood and uh, yeah a uh, little but some bits and pieces I have to do here but that's that's all and this is now in the middle of the orchard as you see the currants the peach and the Iranian medlars with a beautiful autumn foliage
and the lovely autumn colors of the blueberries. And uh, white currants. And the grapes. Autumn is in the air. And our chicken coops are ready for the cold season. Still we are Bantam chicken was born here with a mom which is Lottie. So you see Sylvie is going back to childhood. She remembers. Now I've transferred this. She is now happy she's going there to sit there. Sylvie is recognizing his birthplace and this is her mom with a new chick that was born this year she has brought the new baby Sylvie is the, uh, the Lottie is the mother she is this one at the center the black speckled one is the new chick They're curious, they're exploring it. And Sylvie is now doing his uh, little exploration. Chickens are very curious animals and quite intelligent. Look at them, how they encourage us to <laughs> uh, take care of them by their cute look, laying eggs and all these things. Of course we have done it, but at the same time we are helping them to reproduce and uh, yeah, spread their genome. Sylvie is now exploring the chicken run of her birth place. <laughs> Quick fan man before uh, abandoning his allotment did something like this that we have in our allotment site. Uh, practically this hinged uh, raised beds with manure and compost inside them partly covered and some of them double raised beds so they, are, they will provide deeper rooting area for things like ca carrots. And of course, uh, we know that this works, so we are seeing it. Uh, unfortunately, Rick Van Man gave up on his allotment. But here we have several good examples of it. One, two, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Here we have a nineteen raised bed, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-eight. 31, 34, 34 raised bed, Rick Van Man style. And of course, two more raised beds are in that corner, which is, uh, uh, yeah, 35, 37. So, good example of the Rick Van's Wolf advertisement campaign. When Rick Van Wolf does something, because he looks genuine more than the, for example, Sean James Cameron. Uh, allotment uh, advertisement channel people will follow that don't know what is in that Sean James Cameron makes good videos because this is her job his job 
but uh, he is not convincing. He looks like a extorter or somebody who milks companies. But uh, uh, Rick uh, Clark or Richard Clark or Rick Van Man looks convincing enough. So probably I should title this video Rick Van Man vs Sean James Cameron. The advertisement challenge. It has worked in this case. I've not seen anybody do what the Sean James Cameron has done. The delights of the having a blueberry is the autumn colors of them. As the weather gets uh, colder, the chlorophyll in the leaves dies gradually. And what is left is the starch and a little bit of the cellulose. And that's the color they get. The enzymes also cause this change of color. Of course, some of the blueberries will not turn that quick to autumn colors. This one has not done it. The cold hardy variety is called Vaccinium blueberry. Some of the blueberries already have lost all their leaves, and almost all of their leaves, and you see the new food part appearing in there.
Okay, this is the apple variety red fall stuff. And uh, I bought the tree, I think, from the Rowan's nursery. And today I'm going to harvest it. It's the 9th of the November. Let us see how it looks. It looks uh, kind of reddish with a little bit pink flush here. Some uh, yellow green coloring at the bottom where there was no sunlight shining on it so that was this direction where the blueberry uh, blackberry is so there was not sunshine much and the sun actually shines from this direction from this way so this was the part that didn't receive sunshine and uh, now I'm going to harvest it it's a second year plant, uh, after planting it and last year it gave some crop it is now another fruit most of the other fruit I think it fell and the chickens may have finished them so this is the fruit apple it's a very tasty apple smallish but tasty and I'm looking forward for the next year I'll have to manure it this year and put some manure under it so just help it to have some food for the next year It's a roundish, one-lobed apple, uh, not near flat base, deep to medium eye, and some beautiful coloring, as you see. And as the name suggests, red, red fall stuff. In the middle of the October, I started to plant some bulbs, and as you see, the crocus are coming up. I tried to grow them in the pots actually this year because I wanted to take them to home. But as you see, I have a lot more to plant, and a lot, a lot more to plant. So I have to catch up with all this later. There are more bulbs there and there are many more bulbs I planted everywhere else. And uh, these are the ones I, I can take I can I can take home because they are practically portable. And as you see the crocus is flowering. This is one of the many pots of crocus I planted this year. And today is the 9th of the November. It's a very cold day. We had some heavy rains, of course, it means there was no frost today, but yesterday and the day before there was frost. And the seems crocus loves it. We'll be surprised. Zaffron is one of these uh, bulbous plants of the family of crocus. Zaffron, the expensive herb, expensive spice. I'm looking forward to this crocus. Uh, Sunday, 15 of the November 2016. It's a lovely sunny day. And in the allotment, we have two new chickens. Susan, can you show me? One by one, put them in. Okay, is one blue belly, which is that one. Hold it carefully. Don't let them escape. This, uh huh. Open the hoop. Believe it. That's it. First one gone. Second one is a. What was the name of this? What was the name of this one? Mm. It's a flat rock crust. I don't want to close it because I have yet to put the food for them. We keep them here just to oh, accustom or acclimatize them to yeah, the new yeah, allotment. So, so the hens, so the yeah, hens, the hens see them, they see them, 
but they cannot hurt each other. Okay, they gradually they accept each other. They were already nosing. They're meeting their neighbors. So after two or three days, I will release them to the bigger run, which is our orchard. Sylvie is very curious about them. These chickens have never seen bread or rice. Probably they only were fed with a chicken pellet. So they don't know any of these treats. I will bring some uh, bird seed for them. I'm hoping that uh, the new hens will learn from our chicks and chickens by looking at them how they eat this bird seeds. I put a little bit of bird seed here and I see that they already have started to copy them. These are, remember, these are the chicks, 22 weeks old, which I've never seen before anything other than cage. Of course, they are not cage birds. But now they are starting to eat. They looked at the others and learned. They are seeing each other, they are learning from each other by eating the same food and uh, they get used to each other. These are the Persian crests that I planted, I uh, saw in the late August. 2016 and now today is the 17th of the November and as you see the leaves are lovely and grown up some of them are going to seed because we had a warm autumn so far relatively so I'm going to tip the cut those tops and eat them they're very fresh they're very juicy lovely and uh, I found that uh, actually the Persian crest, compared to thing, the salad greens like a uh, um, racket, they're actually cleaner when you when you take them to for washing and disinfecting. They're much cleaner, and even after that, you you notice that the radishes and uh, little leaves of radishes and racket can have some mold on them from the time that they are in the uh, ground. But the Persian crest doesn't have anything. Even the molds don't like to grow on it. It's such a good natural heirloom uh, seed. I'm going to harvest a few bits. Okay, I'll harvest a few of this. These tips are really juicy and lovely. Uh, it's uh, November, so they should not really go into seed. So I'm uh, cutting the tops because we had a really warm autumn. And uh, ho um, that means that they will have a chance to grow from the other parts of the plant. 
for a longer period of time. This is strange, we have very warm autumns. Very tender tops of the Persian crest, ready for eating. I'll take a few more tops. A really juicy plant. Juicy, slightly spicy, or hot you can say. Yeah, that's the correct word actually. And look at the leaves. Quality leaves. I take a few of these uh, rockets, rocket leaves. We are really, really having a so far warm autumn. It is so warm that I planted some parsnips and these parsnips came to good growth. It's the 25th of the November and the strawberries, <laughs> this variety, is yet in the fruit. Can I see it? Please. Just leave them down please. I just want to have them hanging naturally and yet there are more coming look at the flowers here and yet some flowers there this is a strange year Strawberry in 21st of the 25th of the November. Strawberry in the 25th of the November. What's going on with the climate? I was going to cover the Persian crest that I noticed the radishes are planted in the October also are doing well. So I just harvest a few of these radishes. What about these ones? No, they are not doing well yet, but these uh, other ones are alright. So, some radishes harvested for eating. I love beautiful colors of the autumn. This is a rose. And uh, this is our first uh, asparagus bed. For the first year, I think that uh, this is now has grown really tall. Uh, that is about one and a half meter. So next year, I think that I can get a really good crop from this bed. I have another bed which I planted this year. And uh, this one is now three years old. So hopefully we will have a good crop. What I will do is now, I will uh, first uh, cut the ferns of the asparagus down to the ground level. That's how we remove all the uh, weeds. And then after that, I will cover it with a layer of the manure or compost. Then I cover it for the uh, spring. And hopefully in May and June, we will have some good crop of the asparagus. Taste of asparagus, let me describe it. It's something between um, broad bean and uh, cabbage, something, something. Um, it's more like broad bean actually. More like a broad bean. Beautiful flower. This is a plant, of course. I think that's the name of it.
Anyway, there's a name for it. Okay, uh, now I have uh, cleared the uh, asparagus bed from the weeds and uh, I've placed the uh, black cardboard on top of it and then to hold it down so the uh, chickens and wind cannot lift it I have placed a, a pallet that I had here and hopefully that will be holding it down until the next spring beautiful rose what's the name of this rose faithful friend mother shrub roses okay um, I think I bought this from the little or oldie yeah probably oldie yes and uh, it gives a very open loose um, rose pinkish not much aromatic but it's beautiful anyway autumn colors are also beautiful this is the second asparagus bed that i have i planted this in 2016 from plants that i bought i think from the hmm. anyway one of the nurseries and they were not as strong as the ones i bought from the aldi but anyway they grew and uh, now I've covered it, I've weeded it, I've added uh, one bag of manure and then I covered it and hopefully it give me some good crop next year there are a few bald patches on it that uh, the plants, the crown of the asparagus that I planted in the spring, in winter last year actually, this year they didn't grow well so I may just get a few ones from the um, Aldi when they bring it of course and plant it there Something strange is going on. It's the 24th of the November. And this broad beans that I planted, I bought it as a plant. Very cheap. And uh, it wasn't a bargain, so I bought it. But now they're in flower. 24th of the November 2016 in the polytunnel. And they are in flower. What a beautiful flower. The variety is, uh, uh, what? <laughs> I forgot the name. Uh, Aqua Dolce, whatever, uh, is a winter hardy variety. Allotment is now in the winter mood. So this uh, Topaz apple is the last apple that has some leaves yet and uh, other trees have lost their leaves and the potato patch is covered the trees which are planted this year also are now shed have shed all their leaves except a few ones uh, including the apple rachka and uh, um, the queens, they have some leaves yet. The salad greens, Persian cress and racket and uh, Mizuno and Mibuno and uh, uh, mustard, oriental leaves and the cabbages are yet carrying on. Cabbages and the uh, broccolis and the uh, uh, sprouting broccoli. All doing well. The garlics are planted there where it is center, the empty ones. And they have not yet germinated, so we will see how they will do. This is the other patch of the Persian cress and including the, some radishes which are in the center. 
Persian crest, as you see, the second batch of it is also doing well. The third batch of the Persian crest is there at the center, you see it, and they are doing well also. I'll put this part of the allotment on the rest. The red current uh, has shed its leaves underneath, and the black current is the same. Some leaves of these rows has remained, uh, and the asparagus bed is in the rest. The pond is almost a uh, freezing point, and the uh, rest of the trees are here. Of course, the figs uh, will not do anything, so I have to cut these fruits. Now, going for the polytunnel. Polytunnel is uh, the greens are growing, <coughs> mustards, the all kind of greens that we have here, some parsley, some freely mustard, and the uh, bok choy there, and again the mustard. These are the spinach, not bad. I have to weed here, I have not weeded these parts. And these are all the winter salads in the polytunnel. They are smaller than the other ones because they were seedlings when I brought them. So they may take a little time to grow. I planted some cabbages. The broad beans are in flower. Strange. Again, some scorching broccoli. Broad beans are in flower. Surprise, surprise, this geranium is yet in flower. Of course, it's molding. I think I have to open the. Because the, for the storm, when the hurricane was here, I closed the. I blocked the. Beautiful crocos. But I made a mistake, I think. I should have planted really deep. But uh, anyway, they're all right. They look in the flower. Oh, beautiful flower. I'll take a few pictures. Oh, it's a good change for this time of the year. 25th of the November, or 24th of the November. There is nothing else, no flower. These are the only flowers. It's the November 22nd today and uh, it's a very wintry time. Of course in the autumn at this time we will have hurricane. In our allotment we also have hurricane. Fortunately nothing has been affected by it as much. And it's amazing I can go and uh, harvest some salads. Salad leaves for eating. These are some rocket and some Persian crest. Persian crest you see here. And under all of these are some eggs. So allotment is yet productive at this time of the year. We can go and harvest some uh, lovely crop. Again, Persian press at the center. Lovely quality leaves. I just harvested in the dark. I could not see anymore. <laughs> so that's it. The life is in such a way that I go to work in the dark and come back in the dark. And the effort that I made in the summer and late summer, now I can um, live with it. This is a harvest of vegetables and some herbs and some flowers. I will make a video now about how to actually wash the salad greens. Okay, the first thing I will do, I plug the sink and I start to fill it with water. And I add the salad greens that I have one by one to this. I will not add at this stage the radishes, radishes should be cut, the tail and the head of them should be cut and the bad leaves should be separated. I will show you what I mean by that. Okay, I have removed temporarily the plug. Uh, I use this hand, uh, this brush. How to wash the salad greens? Okay, the salad greens can be washed by uh, putting them in a sink. You can wash mix them with the radishes but you have to remove the soil 
the top part, the bottom part of the radish will be cut. The leaves of it, the wood ones can be eaten, the bad ones should be uh, put in the compost. Uh, for washing them, you just plug the sink like that, let the water fill it. Um, I do it the way that my mother was uh, teaching us, uh, just adding a few drops of the washing of liquid. So that actually makes anything that is soil or any anything attached to the leaves it to become loose and slippery. Then I will add some salt. This is just some salt, the cheapest salt that you can afford. And just a splash a little bit here and there. Salt is a disinfectant, so practically it will kill any germs or anything that are present. It's ionizing agent, so the ions of it will kill the uh, anything that is alive there, except the leaves. Then I leave it for 20 minutes to half an hour, and after that I can pick them. At the moment I just leave it. Okay, now the half an hour has passed. I remove the plug and I start to wash the leaves under the running water. That way, actually, water where was attached and is now slippery because of the uh, washing of liquid to be washed down and drained. I will continue to do this uh, to the last bit, and that's what what where we are packing. Okay, that's the end result. This is the salad leaves ready to be eaten. Uh, it's a combination of Persian crisps and other things. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Every day, I go to the allotment, pick a few greens, salad greens, and take it home and eat. This is a salad bag, bigger than a salad bag. <laughs> and uh, Persian crisps. Uh, I have rocket here. I have Mizona, Mibona, these uh, kind of oriental uh, greens. Uh, I have uh, radishes. All the things, radish, you cannot get it actually in the salad bags. But uh, really delightful. Look at this uh, rocket, beautiful rocket. And uh, Persian Chris, best of all. And uh, just for walking to the lot, I can have all this beautiful food, greens. That's amazing. I like that. That's a life. Allotment life is beautiful. Persian Chris. Uh, today is the 24th of the November 2016. It's uh, Thursday. And uh, <laughs> I, I cannot say how much I enjoy, how much I love it. When I just can go in the dark, coming from the work, grabbing a few, um, yeah, handful of the salad greens from the, uh, from the <laughs> uh, vegetable patch, not polytunnel. Polytunnel ones are small, yeah. Just take it home and just wash it and eat. That's that's such a joy. That's such a beautiful thing. And uh, okay, this is the Persian crest, as you see. Uh, very good leaves and very quality leaves. I want to show you an example of the other kind of greens that I grow, like this Oriental leaf, Mizuna. Mizuna is in the, being attacked. This is a good example of it, but uh, most of them are really badly attacked by the uh, all kind of creatures. They are in the same bed, the same conditions, nothing changed for them. But yet, they are not as good as this Persian crest. And I'm going now to taste the uh, one, just to describe how it tastes. Okay, this is a typical leaf of a Persian crest. And I'll now taste it. The first thing you notice is that it's juicy. It's not dry. Then a nice, deep, spicy, hot taste comes to your mouth. It's deep. And then it fades and 
the taste of the green you can feel it when I compare it with something like um, Mizuna which I taste now Mizuna has a has a strange taste kind of I cannot describe it it's, it's not cabbage it's not anything it's kind of bad smell taste kind of thing coming out of it it's not just this specimens every year I grow it and every year it says it tastes the same I already buy it from the shop they say it tastes the same it's practically a brassica so really you cannot expect anything other than that but this Persian crest is really juicy have a hot suddenly hot peppery taste And what makes it better is this juiciness of it. You can have nasturtium which is hot, but doesn't have the juice. It's dry. Okay, today is the 1st of the November. And I'm harvesting the last uh, apples from the Rachka apple that we have. So I noticed that the bears are gradually pecking on them because they're red. They're a beautiful red. So I'm harvesting them now. I learned the uh, harvesting, cutting from the tree like that, from Julia, the wife of the Stephen Hayes, Dr. Stephen Hayes. Of course, I removed the fruit pot now here, but anyway, that's the way you remove it like that, push it away from you. Hello. Thank you very much. How are you? So the tree can now go for a rest. This was his first year and I hope next year God willing it will give us some fruit also. The birds are picking on this. Okay, these are the last of the apple variety named Rochka or Raika. I bought the tree from the keeper's nursery and I planted in the um, February of 2016. And the first year it gave about 25 fruits. And uh, I just saw today that the birds are pecking on it. And one of them was actually more damaged, so I just cut that bit, and that's just, just to show you the flesh color. It's kind of greenish yellow now. The first of the November 2016, now it is. And six of the fruits were there yet, besides this one, which was damaged. I harvested them. And if I want to arrange them in order of size, they go like this. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had uh, more than that, 25. It's a harvested from the description of it is that is a kind of roundish uh, apple. One lobe is a little bit bigger than the other one side in the specimens that I have, in almost all of them. Uh, it has a very beautiful metallic color, red, and with some green and yellow um, flush. A little bit russeted in this one. And uh, if I want to taste it, which I will do. Mm. Mm. Crunchy, easy crunchy, not soft, not easy to crunch. Fresh, mm. sweet, slightly acid, very tasty, I must say, very refreshing. Mm. I can tell one of the best apples I've ever had. It's 
So, how to comment? This is one of the, my best apples, probably. This is a tasting video of the apple variety Red Fall stuff. Uh, I harvested it a few days ago, so you can, for description of it, you can see that video. I'm just going to cut it now, right away, eat it. It's early morning, I want to have my apple. Okay, the apple is now cut, and as you see, it is kind of uh, white, yellow, kind of green, slightly greenish color. As you see, it's relatively medium to small in size. The skin of it is red, of course you have seen this before, so I'm just going directly now to taste it. Mm. Crunchy, mostly sweet, very slightly acidic. Mm. It's a pleasant apple, completely edible. Mm. Crunchy, not hard at all. Red fall stuff to my experience is a good apple. Not as good as the uh, Raika or Rachka, but on its own is a good apple. Oh, crunchy. Mm, mm. Mm, yummy. And kind of dryish, not much juice in it. This sample is not very juicy. Was it last year juicy? I have to refer to my videos, you can look at that. Hmm. Quite interesting. Okay, Grandiola, Grandiola. <laughs> um, passion fruit anyway. Mm. It's very sweet. Kind of sweet gummy, it's a little bit aftertaste of gum. Oh, the seeds are actually very brittle, you can just easily crunch your teeth on them. And it's lovely and sweet, such an elegant taste. Oh, oh I like this fruit. I may go and buy a few more. Mm, make a smoothie with ice cream. Although it is winter, I mean near the winter, it's end of the autumn, 24th of the, or 25th of the November. Oh, such a lovely, nicely smelling, and uh, tasting, sweet tasting and elegant tasting. Fruit. Mm. Oh, I like that. Sweet. Very, very slightly. If you think about it. Very slightly, a little bit like a perfume. Taste. And no acid. I think this is a perfect time to eat it. That's the way it looks. Inside of it. Oh, it is really lovely. Oh, tonight I have a treat. My wife made me a salad food. Including uh, oranges, food center, apple, passion fruit in the middle, the seed ones, grapes, pomegranate, and um, some pear, which I don't recognize like this. It's beautiful. 
This is lovely. This salad, fruit salad. Try it. Try it for yourself. Passion fruit makes it really good. Gives a different aroma and fragrance. What a nice thing for a Saturday night. Thank you, Suzanne. Okay, these are the tape of the tapes of the pumpkins or winter squash and summer squash that I've grown this year. Uh, I'm I'm not just after uh, eating them. I want because we have to live with them for a long period of time, several months, sometimes a year. This one is from last year. It's a Turk turban, and uh, is now November fourth, and yet it is here. We can use it. It's uh, absolutely healthy and edible. So I'm going for kind of pumpkins and summer squashes that have a beauty beside uh, being edible. This is a summer squash, scallop varieties. As you can see, they look different. They're kind of decorative and we have it in the windowsill for curing and storage. They look beautiful. Also, these ones, these ones. This is a winter squash, of course. This is summer squash. And uh, all these kind of butternut squashes, we have used several of them already. Uh, I, I grow them because they are edible. At the same time, they're beautiful. Look at this little one. Beautiful. Look at this prince, crown prince. Beautiful. And uh, this is the harvest of our pumpkins and summer squashes for this year. This one can be used as like courgette. Tastes like that also. But has a very hardy skin that can last long. Um, this year for me is the year of uh, bulbs. Usually I do this in the allotment, but I thought this year I will do for home or even if I grow in allotment I'll bring it here just to enjoy some flowers in the winter. So about this uh, bulb and release uh, a piestrum from the little and uh, so it's a very quite large bulb but it can be everything that it needs including uh, including the pot the bulb itself, two bags of the compost, and a little saucer that you can put it uh, so it collects the water inside here. And uh, I'm released, as you know, it gives a very large flower or several large flowers at the end of a large stem and it goes upright. And I'm looking forward to that. So I have two varieties of the amaryllis, this one which has a lined, or like a barcode, it has lined white and red uh, colors, and this one which is pure red. And it came with uh, four bags, each, each one had one bag of the compost, two bags of compost, and one of them actually never used, because there was not much space in it, so it's extra. I suppose they give it as a spare, so I can use it on other, other things probably. And that's the way the bulbs look. And this one. And now I'll go to water. Right, and I'm watering the other releases. Just a bit around. Just to help the compost a little bit settle also. And looking forward that they start to grow. They already have done the, some of the growth. And they grow better. And larger.
Henry Day's kitchen. Can we go and find your sandwich? Can we go and find your sandwich? 